Hi guys, good morning. This is Dan. Welcome to Anglo Guys. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. And for those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. I greatly appreciate it. This is the um, daily forecast for the collection um, for Saturday, the 21st of November. It is not solely set for that day. It is also available to use whenever it comes across your path, whenever you come across this video. If it's just showing up in your feed somewhere, and you happen to find it and you're watching it and it's not the 21st of November, that's completely okay. The message still may be good for you. Um, I believe that set the intention for the message to be for the greater collective for the highest good. When it reaches you is most important, not when it was created for. So keeping that in mind, it is a timeless message. Uh, if it doesn't make any sense or doesn't resonate, that's completely fine. It doesn't mean anything wrong. It just means you might be working on something different at this time. So for those of you that are watching, like, you know, a numer numerological or daily order doesn't quite resonate, that's okay, don't worry. It doesn't mean that you're missing out or anything like that. Um, and if you decide to make any decisions in your personal life in regards to having seen this reading, please uh, know that you're responsible for the decisions. So always trust your own intelligence and intuition over anything anybody else may say. So let's get into what the cards have to say today. I certainly feel authoritative in the shuffle. <laughs> All right, and we have the Fool. So Major Arcana, big energy, definitely. We have, uh, the Fool is the sign of Aquarius, I believe, which is very expansive, mm -hmm. free thinking, the element of air, which we also have that vibe yesterday with that Ace of Swords, definitely. The Ace of Swords would be about new beginnings, as would the Fool, right? The Fool is the first card, the card number zero of the Major Arcana. It's the beginning of the journey. When I look at this, to me, there's an eagerness here, especially with this cat being at the front of the boat. I'm ready to navigate waters maybe that are uncharted or that we haven't necessarily explored yet. That would be the clarity that we experienced in yesterday's Ace of Swords, hopefully. Maybe we've made a decision to make some changes, do something different, pursue a path that we otherwise hadn't considered. The Fool is about actually taking those steps to do that. It's about remaining open enough to be um, open to your experience and available to your experience, sort of amenable and, and ready to take on the adventure, but also being um, aware enough to not be sort of foolish, right, or um, naive in what it is that we're doing. It's okay to experience new things and be challenged by experience, um, but we also don't want to sort of not see the dangers involved. I'm not saying that there are dangers, what I'm saying is, is that it's that fine line of um, not allowing sort of fear to lead us or worry, unfounded worry, to lead us about what possible dangers could be out there. We see this um, crocodile down in the water, right? Which says to me that there could be, you know, generally with a traditional fool tarot card art, he's walking very close to the edge of a cliff, right? And sort of it's that idea of, I think of it as the idea of no risk, no reward, right? He has that little dog which says to him he's not necessarily alone in his travels, but also the dog is there kind of warning him, like, be careful, there's the edge. So with this cat, I feel like we have all of these sort of uh, companions, including the danger of the alligator, bringing us along this new journey. Um, it may be, you know, sort of, we may not be able to see very far into the future. It looks like this cat might be straining a little bit to kind of get a better grasp on what may be coming next, and we may not know that right now at this time, but I think that's part of also the fool's journey, is about trusting the process, trusting ourselves, our higher selves, our higher intelligence, our ability to navigate situations in the moment versus trying to plan so much for the future. I don't feel like there's a lot of opportunity to do that, just with the sort of state that the world is in right now. What that requires of us is to sort of uh, depend more upon our um, presence my, you know, present moment selves and how we interact with the environment on a case-by-case -case or moment-by-moment -moment basis. That is also sort of the new uncharted territory of the, the fool card, right? So as we learn to adapt to this sort of way of thinking, being, um, operating, I believe that there's gifts and there's opportunities and room for that Aquarius expansion that we see in the fool card. 
uh, to teach us. We also see that expansion, or at least spiritual knowledge or, or growth in these lotuses that are floating on the water. So even amidst sort of the potential dangers that could be there or the uncharted depths we might be navigating as we move towards these new goals, these new ideas, these new opportunities, there is room to learn, to grow, to ex expand ourselves and, and understand things better, right? Um, the light of the sun here to me also speaks to that opportunity, right? That we follow that sort of light that's within us. Remember that Six of Wands energy is underneath this. It's very celebratory, very spirit driven, very much higher self driven. Uh, in that card, there was that light that was sort of surrounding that cat. He was kind of being heralded or appreciated. This is about us we are sort of appreciating ourselves enough to trust ourselves to sort of move forward into maybe a new direction that, um, uh, you know, could potentially change a lot of stuff for us, or at least that's the idea. There's a, keeping that, like, sort of hope and optimism would be key with this card, right? But not being so optimistic or hopeful that we're being, um, naive, okay? So, let's see what the Oracle has to say. Oh, interesting. So we have surrender. The white flag is up. It's number 46, which would be a number 10, which would boil down to a one. One would all be about the self, the energy of the number one. So surrender, to me, in reference to this fool card, it makes me think, what do we need to say maybe surrender so that we can take this journey, so that we can sort of reassess or reposition ourselves in a way, maybe making ourselves a little bit vulnerable to our environment or to the experience in our environment, maybe relying on others. We saw a lot of that in that Three of Pentacles energy in the midweek this week. There is this sort of maybe collective collaboration that needs to take place. We also see that with the different animals on this card, which is not a traditional depiction in the uh, Fool card, but when you have like a dog, a crow, and the alligator, even the alligator being sort of uh, you know, maybe a bit of a threat down there or unknown factor, it, it still teaches us a lesson. He's actually the one closest to the lotus blossoms, right? So sometimes it's from those harder experiences that we learn the most or we grow the most, we expand the most. I'm not saying that we need to suffer to expand, but what I am saying is, is that, you know, what are the things that we could let go of, that we could surrender, that we could uh, release so that we can be brave and take the fool's journey, take the new avenue, pursue the thing that we desire the most, even if it doesn't seem wholly practical, right? Um, I'm, and again, like I say with every reading, you guys make your own decisions, you're responsible for them, so I'm not telling anybody to throw, you know, the baby out with the bathwater. What I'm saying is just be open to new experiences, be excited by them, be enthusiastic by them, and be willing to sort of surrender yourself to the opportunities that come your way no matter what the challenges may be. Um, there's a way to, you know, sort of stay balanced and grounded, but yet also um, open and uh, receptive to new opportunities or uh, things that we didn't otherwise necessarily think were possible. So that's to me this surrender fla uh, flag. It may mean something different when I read the definitions, but to me I feel like it's asking us, what can we let go of? And also the white cat with the white flag to me is about this purity of what we desire, or who we are, letting our flag fly high is also another message that I'm getting right now. So, you know, our truth is in that white flag. What is it that we want? What is it that we desire? And then what do we need to surrender within ourselves to be able to pursue that desire? And we have on uh, Obsidian, which is a very, like, uh, grounding stone, it wards off negativity, so that's great, is enjoy. So I would say this, enjoying the surrender, enjoying the journey, the newness of the fool, the exuberance, the excitement, the challenge, enjoying all aspects of it as much as possible would be key today. As we're grounding in that and we're finding the truth in that and the enjoyment in whatever the experience may be, however new it may be, it also keys us back into that original grounding stone from Sunday, which is that love-centered energy. When we're enjoying something, it's so much easier to be centered in that excitement, that idea of love, that appreciation. Also, I would say this too, when we are enjoying the experience or we're finding the joy in the experience, even if it's challenging or unknown to us, 
it also enables us to sort of raise this white flag of surrender where we can maybe forgive others, forgive ourselves, surrender to the situations as they are instead of fighting against them. That creates the open movement that we see in the Fool card or the opportunity to maybe move forward in a different direction we didn't otherwise see. So there's a positivity to this enjoy storm and there's a freedom to this surrender card that allows us to kind of take the Fool's journey uh, today. Okay, so that is your forecast for the day. Let me read these definitions really quick. So the fool is dedicated. I love this cat's name. It's trouble. <laughs> Does not mean we're going to get into trouble, people. But you could potentially if you're not careful. Uh, symbolism is the boat is connection to the earth. Smoothly, smoothly riding one, the emotions. The dog is warnings from those on the sidelines. The crow is intuition. The alligator is an unknown possible threat. The lotus flowers are connection to spirit, turning a difficult situation into something beautiful. The weeping willow is going into the unknown. So, the fool asks you to have confidence as you embark on a new adventure. Know that when you feel grounded, when you feel that connection to the world around you, regardless of where you stand, your instincts will keep you afloat. Much like that dog on the riverbank, there will always be those who will project their fears as they are so focused on what may be lurking about in the water that they could never conceive of a vessel that would be strong enough to protect them. Trust your instincts and have faith that the journey you are on will not be in vain. If the fool appears in a reading, you may want to ask yourself if you are trying too hard to control the situation. Can you go with the flow? On the other hand, you may need to consider if your actions are reckless or if you are acting impulsively without acknowledging the consequences. The energy attributes positive are free to explore without fear, spontaneous and almost childlike when making decisions, open to new experiences without expectations. The negative is disregard, disregard for consequences or the impact on others. Carefree to a fault, lacking self-control and acts on impulse only. Sorry, my dog is snoring underneath the desk. Um, and then we have, what was it? Was it 46? Yeah, 46 for surrender. And again, that would be self-focused, boiling down to a one. That's why I say, where can we let go of things within ourselves to move forward? Surrender. When the answers cannot be found, I surrender so that I may listen to the answers that resides in stillness. When you want what you want, your stubbornness can cause you to invest yourself in situations that will never come to fruition. The business of your mind and the power, the busyness of your mind and the power of your emotional needs can quickly take over your energetic experience and make it difficult to see, hear, and discern what is right in front of you. When the stubbornness turns to obsession, something must give, and your energetic stability can become the victim of your compulsions. You can spend an entire lifetime obsessing about something that will never come to be. Better to surrender and reassess where your energies can serve their highest purpose. Do I refuse to let go because I believe I am not worthy of something better? Do my obsessions create an energetic static that cloud my intuition? Why am I not surrendering to the tide of energetic movement? It's interesting that there's that message of uh, the tide, and then we have this fool's journey that's taking place in a boat, which is also not a very um, traditional sort of um, depiction of the fool, which I love that MJ did it this way, the artist. But um, to me, when we're talking about the tide carrying us, there is a certain amount of faith in that. And that also ties into that faith that the fool needs to have, that openness, that um, trust that we need to have as we get carried down the river of, of the unknown, right? But that's half the excitement. How do we choose to look at it? In fear or in excitement? Do we struggle against it or do we flow with it? How do we find the enjoyment so that we can better flow with it today? That is your forecast for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry about this morning. And if I'm, my tone is a little low, it's still, I have house guests still. So I'm just trying to be quiet because I'm next to their bedroom. Um, thank you for tuning in. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you're new to me, please hit the subscribe button if you feel so inclined. If you're interested in a private reading, those are available. You can message me at my Facebook business page. And again, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you guys all tomorrow. And soon, December's uh, Taroscopes will be going out for all the signs. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.